This video explains how to calculate the mode of a data object in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and the first example is based on the vector object that we can create with line one of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called x1. And as you can see, this data object is numeric and contains six different numeric values. Now, if you want to return the mode of this data object, then we can create our own user-defined function that calculates the mode. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines three to seven of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm using the unique function, the tabulate function, the match function, and the max function to calculate the mode of our data object. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new function object is appearing, which is called myMode. And now in the next step in line nine of the code, we can apply this function to our data object x1. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom that the value seven is returned. And this is the mode of our data object x1. So in this first example, it was clear that the value seven is the mode of our data because this is the only value that appears twice in our vector object. However, it can also happen that two different values appear to the same number of times as the mode in a data object. And this is what I want to show you in the second example in line 11 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm first creating another data object. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right that another data object is appearing, which is called x2. And this data object contains the value three once more compared to our first data object x1. And for that reason, the value seven is appearing twice and the value three is appearing twice as well. So if we apply our mode function to this data object, as you can see in line 13 of the code, you can see at the bottom that our user-defined function returns our two modes at the bottom in the RStudio console. So in the previous examples, I have explained how to apply our user-defined mode function to vector objects. However, it's also possible to apply this function to a data frame column. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 15 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm first loading some example data. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called Iris. And then in line 16 of the code, we can apply the head function to return the first six rows of our data set. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom that our data frame contains five different columns, whereby the first four columns contain numeric values. Now let's assume that we want to return the mode value of the column petal length. Then we can apply the code that you can see in line 18. So in this line of code, I'm applying the function myMode to the iris data set. And then I'm extracting the values of the column petal length by using a dollar operator. And after the dollar operator, I'm specifying the name of the data frame column that I want to extract. So if you run line 18 of the code, you can see at the bottom that the values 1.4 and 1.5 are returned. And these two values are the two modes of the column petal length. So in the previous examples, I have explained how to apply our own user-defined function to find the mode of a data object. However, it's also possible to use the desk tools package for this task. And this is what I want to show you in the next examples of this tutorial, starting in line 20 of the code. So in line 20 of the code, I'm installing the package However, I have done this already, so for that reason, I'm just loading the package as you can see in line 21. So after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the desk tools package, such as the mode function, as you can see in line 23. And in this line of code, I'm applying this function to our first data object x1. So if you run this line of code, you can see that the value seven is returned. And in addition to that, the mode function also returns the frequency of this value. So in this case, the mode is appearing twice. 
Similar to that, we can apply the mode function to the second data object x2. And then you can see that this function returns two mode values as well. And it again returns the frequency of these values. And then in the last example in line 27, I'm showing how to apply the mode function to the column petal length of the iris data set. So if you run this line of code, you can see that the values 1.4 and 1.5 are returned as mode values. And these values both occur 13 times. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.